Hello everyone, it's Peter here, Piotr Fisner. How are you doing guys? Hello. So, in today's episode we've got... No, not a vacuum cleaner. We've got a... Supposed to be a Bluetooth speaker. So customer lives behind the glass door. What's wrong? More tape. And had to mail in because it's too far away to where I live. And I I've already fixed one Bluetooth speaker for him. Whoa. It's the, it's the same kind. JBL. It's used heavily on the construction side. That's why. Well, uh, these are builders, yes, they are builders and they, they use these to entertain themselves during the work. So hopefully I can fix it without redesigning it in order to work, because sometimes that's the case. And if I have to, I will redesign. <laughs> But let, let's fingers crossed that it's it's fine. And my meter is here because I'm charging. I built solar panel, photovoltaic solar panel, and I oh that's volts. Yeah, that's volts, but that's DC. That's AC and the true RMS because I I've built that solar panel first time in my life. Okay, 240, so this, this is working, not breaking, so it's safe and sound enough to plug it in. It should have nice sound at the start, like a room. And we've got a standby, and battery is sort of charging, not charging. Okay, so the diode, it's here as a standby. <laughs> That's, that's the sound. And that's okay, that's working. Okay, let's try to con connect with it. So let's put a Bluetooth. A power a new device. Oh, sorry, you don't see. So that's the problem pairing no don't pair mm. okay power a new device available devices let's press or oh no power guys completely it died let me press it the power button again okay now it's a Okay, maybe I shouldn't press it. Maybe it's my fault, okay? And the Bluetooth. Okay. Anybody understand here something? Because I think I'm the least person who... Yeah, that's a Bluetooth sign. Okay, yes, now it's looking like working to me. I think all it needed was to to be reset no the power is dissipating okay so there is a problem with power in this one so we need to fix it oh okay i remember that the top was openable and here were screws as well at the sides so we've got screws here at the rear screws here and then this old top was going off. I can disconnect the power and I can pause, I can unscrew it and we can see what's inside. Okay, we don't need a meter for now because we need to see why the power is disappearing. The power supply should constantly give us a power and not fading away. So I'll be back. You can leave a like button if you don't mind, please. Okay guys, so it was uh, at, there was an attempt of opening it, 
Now, for those who don't know, you've got two screws on each side, four screws here, two and two on each side, and then there are three screws here. Okay? And then watch out because you get a one cable which is connected, so just making you aware about that. Now, this power supply should give us a constant, this plastic should give us a constant power and I don't remember how many watts it was, okay? I, I mean, how many volts it was. I, I just don't recall it. But as soon as I will touch my meter, I'll know. Nothing else is disconnecting. Disconnected, I mean. Let's put the cable back on, okay? Back on. Let's put the meter and off. Yeah, that's the sound of powering on. Now here comes 240 as far as I remember. Yeah, 240 something. 244, that, that's correct, okay. And that goes out to here, from what I remember. Ooh. Ooh, I see some. Let me get the magnification. And I'll tell you if I see something suspicious. I'm looking like sort of a rust for some reason. So probably, well, I might be still wrong because it's looking like yellowish. And I don't know if that's still on or off or what it is. yeah no power i don't see anything here and if i press power again it will turn on again yes it will turn on again and will it give us a sound yes will give us a sound so yeah and how long it, it takes several seconds to go off you can see here is a green you see green um, that's from the LEDs and as soon as this yeah and it's off now so it takes several seconds and it going off it's going off so what we can do is we can check how many volts we have on the power supply and if mm, that's not nice it goes somewhere there that goes to the speakers to the top so we're talking here something some voltage okay let's see oh that's not nice yeah that's 40 45 44 43 you see it's dropping it's dropping it's dropping it's dropping 40 39 so let's try to power it on. Thirty-three, thirty-two. It holds like that and it's dropping. That's weird. I've got an auto. Let's do on the volts DC. Nothing, literally, no DC. We got 27 volts. No point, zero 27. Point zero 22. Okay. So no AC, no DC. And it's off. Let's power it on again. No light. Need a light. I've pressed the power button and no luck this time. 
I pressed it again. Okay, now I've got it. So it's a wrong pinout. Yeah, wrong pinout. Look. I need to find positive and negative. I thought I've, I know where positive and negatives are. But I was wrong. So. I'll pause, I'll look, and I'll let you know where is the positive and the negative. Okay, so I will share the photo for you, for those who don't know. This is the VCC, VCC, and VCC, yes? We're talking, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse now. VCC, VCC, and VCC plus ground, 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 okay? So this power supply should give us constant uh, here DC and here ground for that DC. Unfortunately, unfortunately for ourselves, bonkers. Let me discharge the big capacitor because it's, okay. It's off the mains and it's discharged, <coughs> so it's fine. Now, when you work with them, and when you work with high power devices, better don't work on unless you are really careful and don't touch stuff. You've got five watts, hundred ohms, or two of them. You can as well. If they've got ends on on these sides, you can uh, turn them together, or solder them, or do something and insulate them, and then touch. You know touch like that if they've got like an inlet here outlet here well they don't have that but uh, you know like wire from one side and second yes then you can put here twist them together and then touch those sides component and discharge it don't don't touch it. it's it's really dangerous now as I work with them all the time <laughs> you know, when you touch it first time you should do like that as well if you don't want to have something blown in your face so, as you can imagine, if we will get volts here, we've got none. Yes, so that's what I did, and that's what I see, it's none, no volts. Are you talking to me? Look, tangling, that, that you'll never get rid of it. Always, sooner or later, you'll have time when you're tangled. Okay, so we're on volts, we are on the AC volts, we should be on the DC volts. Okay. You see it's nada, nothing. First free and then second free, yes. We should have it. Now let's get it on the auto. <clears throat> and let's get the transformer, which is here. This clear zone is a transformer. Okay, this clear zone here. So let's check this pin and this pin. We've got 340 volts DC, for those who don't know it. 304 volts DC here, 340, pretty much. It's working till the first primary, the hot section, you can call it. And then behind it, it's two volts. So, Either something is creating as a short, and that short causing the transformer to not work, or the transformer is faulty, yes? So we don't know that. Now, the question is, yes, the question is what to do, because, you know, like, we don't have schematics, we don't know what is the efficiency of this transformer what is the winding primary secondary winding it's a high frequency transformer that's all we know and we know that it's supplied with 340 volts okay so then it's step down it, it's going down and it's one to what so it's you know it's still in, under the power so we don't know that we can assume the input on the main board the problem is that I did have this and I don't remember. Maybe I've got a video 
maybe that video is showing me what the DC voltage I need but I know as a fact okay I know as a fact that I could plug in my power supply because there is only one voltage plus and void voltage minus uh, which I could figure out because I would see how much this one consumes as a maximum power consumption and then I can use uh, something which will have higher power uh, like twice more than that and that would allow me to have this buffer yes so then I can reuse it but unfortunately you know I don't know the parameters so I need to plug it in see how many volts how many amps it will take I would say let's short the capacitor oh now it's shorted the spark went through so is it written anywhere like volts or something or model what we could do okay there is a there is a label sort of but here is only written that it's t3.15 al and 250 volts so that's okay now there is a model as well written JVX907 SMPS board but it's not writing the voltage now <clears throat> I would still remove because that's all is working till here and then it's not working from here so you we were talking only one choke here sorry I know you don't see anything and I'm trying to explain okay so we're talking only on this side so we're talking this choke we're talking two caps here and we're talking some probably MOSFET so the highest probability yes if this transformer is still okay would be that this transistor MOSFET yes it's it's burned I would say there is no uh, opto coupling so oh no there is a here some chip I don't know what the chip is maybe that's opto coupler if that would be an opto coupler because it's I why I don't know it's because it has white goo on itself so maybe you know just maybe the standby is here but no it was constant why I know because it's only three VCCs and three grounds there is no standby here on it I'm talking rubbish yes correct VCC times three and ground times three we, we've got no standby voltage here so that won't be optocoupler opto isolator <clears throat> So the only bet I could do here would be this MOSFET. If I'll remove it, and we won't have a power, does it go to this? Yes, one of the lines goes to this here. This one goes to this that's oh that's metal just connector on this side <clears throat> okay that's that's odd that's weird okay here and through here so one goes through this MOSFET so that that's mean that the one if the MOSFET would be wrong if there would be any it's disconnected good if the MOSFET would be faulty, then that's mean, hey ho. I don't know the specification of the MOSFET. I don't know if it's an PNP, NPN, I don't know that. It's not beeping and give us 0 0.3 of millivolt drop. Here is shorted. Here is open. I don't believe it will be faulty then. Yeah, that is shorted in both things. So if that would be two diodes, 
not a MOSFET that would make sense. If that's a MOSFET, it shouldn't be shorted unless the transformer is faulty and causing the short. That would make sense then. Okay, I'll I'll try to pose it, read it what's there. Is it a MOSFET or double diode? And I don't know if I can easily remove it without removing two caps. And these caps are glued in it with a white gooey stuff. So at least one I would have to remove. Um, so unglue it first and then take out this gooey thingy. See what I have on the finger. And then uh, when I'll remove that, I can then un unscrew it because I can't have access with a screwdriver over there. I'll be back. Hello, where we're at. Where we're at, we're back. We're back with an update. I removed that capacitor thanks to that I was able to unscrew the component and, and I was right, it's a double diode, double shot key diode. Let's switch to the microscope. It's MBR2200 FCT in the T200 packaging, yes. So I did check, that's the model, MBR2200 FCT, that's 20 amp high shot key, yes, hot shot key. Bridge rectifier. Unfortunately, that's mean. It's a good one. It's not faulty. So you know what that mean? That that's mean that the transformer is faulty. So either another power supply, or we will be aiming for some transformer which can do the same thing. Yes, which I would have to find. See if that will work. Uh, it's a high frequency. The problem only is, you know, we can only work with those names here on this. It's a PQ32, PB100, YI2034A06. Now again, it's a regular switching power supply. We get a problem with it. Let's plug it in still now we don't have that capacitor we don't have this shotkey diode double shotkey diode switch off the microscope the switch off everything and let's put the meter into the auto mode okay one here second here auto mode and let's plug in this power supply well this way I won't you see so if the transformer receives the current receives the power oh. what's wrong Ooh. 340 yes 340 we've got 340 coming in and we've got nothing coming out 0 0.3 we can call it a day and discharge this big capacitor again to not get electrocuted because we don't like to get electrocuted yeah okay so that's it either JBL will get another um, power supply or will get another transformer I could rewind this transformer to be true but it's a lot of work and I'll pause and I'll check if I can buy another power supply for this JBL Party 100, okay? Be right back.
Okay, I can't find any. So I will leave customer to choices. Either dear one, that's mean, unwind the original transformer, count windings on the primary, count windings on the secondary. Sometimes you've got a primary, then you've got windings of the secondary, and then you've got again uh, windings of the primary and, and so on, doesn't matter. Just, you know, rewind the transformer back again. Or, or get universal power supply and put either back converter or boost converter based on the consumption of the amperes. Yes, because I do believe that if we will get um, like a 150 to 200 watts, it will be even over a kill for this. I don't believe customer is listening all the time on the full power. I need to speak with a customer first because if customer is listening and that has, let's say 100 watts power total consumption, I don't believe it, let's say 80, uh, then it would be good to have you know higher so that this power supply works always on the maximum of 50 percent but never works on the 100 percent i don't like power supplies to work on on that because it's it's a waste yes and it, they die quicker so yes either another power supply or a universal power supply convert it plug it in and this device we've seen it's working doesn't make a short or anything it just that it's a lack of power here, which we know that the transformer is dead. The rest is fine. Probably it's all good and you can use it. I would like to thank you to all the viewers. Thank you for likes or subscribes. If possible, please look in the description of the video. There are a few interesting things, uh, how you can help me and this YouTube channel and to everyone who helped either using Music Magpie or using our affiliate links in the inter.team website in the shop affiliates, um, affiliate links. Thank you guys and see you in the next video. Bye bye.